so we're going to be talking about ca positive cash flow today. Um, this is um, always a critical subject in business. As we all know from growing up playing the game of Monopoly, the number one rule in business is don't run out of cash, right? Uh, it is. Cash is the lifeblood of your business. And without it, game is over. Um, it's actually one of, you know, the reasons, uh, number one reason most bit small businesses fail. In fact, about 30% of small businesses last year failed because they simply just ran out of money. But what's even more interesting is the fact that although cash is so critical and understanding your financials is so critical that Many business owners and many people within the business just simply don't understand their financials. In fact, in fact there were some reports that say that 60% of most uh, small business owners would, would admit that they really don't clearly understand their financials. And the mission at The Great Game of Business is to help with that, is to make sure that everybody in, in, the, in, in the organization, not just the CEO, not just the leadership team, but everyone in the organization to clearly understand how the business works, how it makes money, how it generates cash. And that's a focus of ours. So we're going to take the time today to share with you some tools that we think can be very helpful um, uh, for you and your teams to, to really understand their business that much better. How do we do that with a great game of business? Well, there's, there's, there's a lot of ways that we support um, teaching business, but uh, the primary ways is the fact that, you know, it's about transparency and education. We want to be open and honest about the financial performance of the organization with everyone in the organization, but we want to quickly follow that up with lots of education because we know that transparency without education is, is not going to get you where you need to go. We really want people to not just know the score, but also be able to change the score to understand how they can affect uh, the financials of the business. We also spend a lot of time just staying very disciplined to the idea of managing the business by the financial. And we do that mainly in a forward focused fashion, meaning that we're not interested as much about what happened yesterday with the financials. We're really interested in how we can actually influence the financials. And you will see that in the tools that we'll present. It's very much a little bit about analyz analyzing where you are at, but also really focusing on what we can do today and tomorrow and in and, and the next few months to actually improve uh, the financial performance of our organization. And lastly, it's about shared accountability. It's making sure that it's not just the CFO, it's not just the CEO that's responsible and accountable for these numbers. They want that more broad base through the organization. Everybody has a piece in this. And when you really leverage that and get everybody involved with um, helping to drive the performance of your financials, specifically in this case, cash flow, you're going to get there that much faster and it's going to be that much more impact you can make in the organization. So with all that said, um, uh, the next slide I want to introduce basically what we have created for you. We basically created a resource guide, your 90-day cash plan resource guide, and it includes three specific tools. Um, the first tool that we're gonna be introducing to you is what we call a cash calculator. And this, this is a tool that helps you quickly evaluate your cash position, kind of where you're at in terms of your cash. It can help you run some scenarios and, and most importantly, educate your team on all the cash drivers and those scenarios. Really understanding and giving your team an, a better understanding of what levers they can actually pull and, and improve your cash position. The next tool is what we call the 90 day cash plan. And that's taking those scenarios and looking at those maybe in a best case, worst case, most likely case scenarios, but then applying that and setting a new financial targets for your next 13 weeks and, and, and uh, identify those targets and work with your team in identifying uh, those particular financial targets we're gonna be shooting, shooting for in the next 90 days. And then the last tool is what we call the cash scoreboard. And this is Great Game 101. It's taking all that information and putting it into a tool that we can put the plan into action with weekly forecasting, line item ownership, and shared accountability across the entire organization. This is the way that we actually start to act on and, and start to change uh, the reality and, and try to uh, prove our, our cash position. The, the last thing in, the, in, in terms of resource guide is that we've also added what we call cash flow tips, tricks, and hacks. And this is just a collection of different tips 
that you can uh, maybe use today to affect kind of your cash to cash cycle, everything from, you know, revenue generation ideas to accounts payable, accounts receivable, inventory, um, maybe new, some, uh, some ideas on new cash uh, sources of cash, that sort of thing. Um, so hopefully this is all very helpful. Um, I do want to step back for a second. There's a reason why we're doing this webinar is that we could just hand these tools over to, um, to, to all of you. But it's very important that we have a chance to really walk through and make sure that everybody clearly understands the tools for one, but understand how to apply those particular tools. Um, if you're not the CFO, cash can be pretty complicated. And uh, we're trying to make it as less complicated as we possibly can, but it's still a complicated uh, topic. So it's very important in this webinar that we took the time uh, to, uh, you know, communicate to the audience about, you know, what they can do to use these tools effectively. So we have one of our uh, senior coaches on board, and I use that word, not that you're old, Dave, but you're also very wise. Um, but he's one of the gentlemen that uh, I would say he's probably the guy that can, that can really get to the, to the meat of it in terms of the financials and can help a lot of organizations really understand it, you know, <laughs> not only his conversations on one-on-one -on -one with CFOs and CEOs, but also he can talk to that frontline employee and, 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 and make sure that they're excited about the, the financials and they clearly understand the financials. So I'm gonna turn this over to Dave and Dave's gonna kind of walk us through the specifics of the tools and hope that it's very helpful. So thank you again for joining us. Hi everybody, <clears throat> appreciate your time and looking forward to uh, spending some time going over these tools with you. <clears throat> I'm gonna kind of give you a highlight view of what they're going to look like and then we'll move over to an excel sheet and show you how they work and then there's three tabs in the excel sheet um, we'll answer questions in between the tabs as we go along so <clears throat> part of this process and why we did the powerpoint we want you to this tool is not uh, built for the bank um, i was talking to one of my clients this afternoon the CFO said he was going through a 13-week cash projection for the bank. It was going to take him two weeks. I said, well, we can do it in 15 minutes. So I showed him and the team <clears throat> this tool, and they all got pretty excited. We're going to do it on Friday. So the, the intended audience with this is uh, operations. Um, just taking a first blush of what you think from your gut. No, don't complicate it. And then bring this to your team run some scenarios, have some conversations, be transparent about what we're doing. But call, uh, your cash will offer you flexibility and security. Uh, once we run this cash flow, then we're gonna consider options and consider different scenarios, and I'll show you a few. Uh, then we wanna put together, as Richard said, a detailed plan. Once we have what we think is a forecast of what's gonna happen, then we wanna put some detail to it. After we detail out the plan, we educate, communicate, <clears throat> and continue to educate the team. Keep, let them know the score, let them know how we're doing. And then we're gonna execute. Probably the most important part of this and a differentiator for you great game folks versus uh, other companies and services that are out there. We want you to get to a point where in a week or two you've got, we can help you get a cash scoreboard up in a week to 10 days and your whole team is going to see the goal and see how we're <clears throat> doing against the goal. And you can get through these 90 days huddling and scoreboarding about cash with your team and hopefully even maybe play a mini game. So the first one is the forecast tool. There's two parts to it. I'm gonna show you those. Then the detailed plan and then the execute the cash plan. Okay. So this first tab is the cash calculator. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. You'll get it, when you get this document, it's locked. <clears throat> so you won't be able to type in the gray um, cells, but you can see the formulas to understand how the page thinks. But what we want you to do is get out your most recent profit and loss statement. We want you to put in your cost of goods. If you can find cost of goods without labor, that's good. What's your fixed labor dollars? What's your variable labor percent? Your operating expense dollars that are fixed, your variable operating, your tax rate, 
your ending cash balance, your previous month end accounts receivable, payable, and inventory. If you don't do inventory once a month, if you don't know what your inventory is, just put a number in. Call it 50 grand and call it 50 grand throughout this whole document. You'll see why in a minute. So after we get these assumptions in here, which are very um, simple or kind of, they're not too qualified, then from your gut, put the, put the revenue that you think you're gonna have for April through October or whatever six month or three month time frame you want. If you wanna do three months, this sheet will accumulate to three month total. So it'll function at whatever pace you wanna use it at. Put the months at the top. And then if you can forecast your receivables, your payables and ending inventory by the month here. And like I said, if you don't take inventory and if you think inventory is gonna stay flat, put the same number across. But if you input these assumptions or these trends here and this anticipated revenue and these receivables, payables and inventory, the bottom here will accumulate your cash balance. So for this particular example, this client with these assumptions and not making any changes on that revenue coming in, they're gonna have $146,000 in cash at the end of the six months. Now here's a second scenario. The rates are about the same, but the revenue is about half. They're anticipating and, you know, putting the revenue based on when you think this is going to turn around. If you think it's going to be June, if you think it's going to be September, your industry, your market, you know, everything's going to be different. So you put this in here, this client with this revenue is going to have a negative $190,000. This third one, this company is a non-essential business. So they have no revenue. Now this model, as simple it is, then assumes that there's no cost of goods. There's no variable labor. So they may have to make some changes to that, uh, in which case we can help you try and fix these formulas if you've got scenarios that are going to change a little bit through this timing. But you can see in this case that this client with three months or this company with three months of no revenue and then ramping back up, they're looking at a negative $600,000 in uh, cash. So if we go back to this first one, as the owner, as the operations person, after you fill this out, <clears throat> you wanna bring it to the team. You say, okay, folks, well, if we could take our, watch this 141 over here in the lower right, right. If we could take our variable labor from 17% to 15%, that would have a $50,000 impact on cash. And so a lot of people in operations, you know, CFOs struggle sometimes, I know everybody on the calls doesn't struggle, but getting you know everybody to understand when your receivables go up, cash goes down. When payables go down, cash goes down. When payables go up, cash goes up. And so you want to teach the relationship between how these items move and how that impacts cash. And so with this sheet, you can see here receivables at 100 or 90. If we change that to 100,000, that's going to lower that 141 by 10 grand. Is that starting to make a little bit of sense? I think it does. And I think to reiterate, this is to take a snapshot at a moment in time. It's not necessarily meant to go get a bank loan, but the principles of this, of how cash works are ca captured in this tool. And it's to help people realize how they can make a difference. One question we had was from a, a service firm and they were asking about would work in process for a service firm be equivalent to inventory if you were if a coach was to help walk them through this? I would consider it yes. 
And so it, this can get complicated because you're going to have um, revenue recognition. Uh, if you import material, you may have, you may not, you may have to uh, increase your inventory. And so there's a lot of things that could move this. Um, and at this point in time, you're not going to make decisions to lay people off based on how this looks, but you want to show the team, this is my first gut thinking. Now let's look at what we can do to improve this and what decisions do we have to make? Another question, Dave, was uh, money coming in, accounts payable. That would, you'd want to capture that as part of your revenue forecast for the future? If you've got receivables coming in or payables? Uh, a re uh, receivables, sorry. You'd lower your receivables here. If you recognize the rec uh, revenue in April, depends on your accounting. If you recognize the revenue in April and the receivable gets paid in May, then that would not impact May revenue. It would decrease May receivables, which would increase your cash. Good. And another question is, let's say you're on a cash-based accounting rather than an accrual-based. Does it make a difference how the worksheet uh, is, is, is utilized? If you're, doing, if you're doing all cash, congratulations. But then you would, whatever values you put in here for receivables, payables, and inventory as your assumption at the start, copy or uh, use those numbers all the way across here. And these are good questions. Be, yeah. These are good questions. And these are the kind of things I think, uh, as Rich stated, why we would encourage people to utilize a coach so we can walk them through all the scenarios and trying to create a tool that matches every industry would have been difficult, but at least we have something that will help them today. But the goal of this is, is not to make decisions. The goal of this is to say, <clears throat> first draft what we think is going to happen. Then take it to the team, put it up on a projector, show your 10 leadership people and say, folks, this is where we're at. This is tight. These are optimistic. What do you think we should do? Someone on the team might say, well, I don't think we're going to get 600 in June. Well, if you think it's 400, let's see what that looks like. We have a... It's going to be uh, 60 grand. Go ahead. We have another question or, um, regarding uh, disposal of assets or uh, purchase of assets. And I think we discussed this previously, the capturing of accounts receivable or accounts payable. Let's pick on accounts payable is just a snapshot in time. Uh, adjusting, returning inventory to a supplier, negotiating terms with a supplier and everything else would be, it's not necessarily figured into this formula because it's a statement of where, where you're at currently. Is that is that a fair statement? Yeah, do you know who asked that question? We can call him out. Vic Corrode. Vic, <clears throat> this first sheet is operations. You're ahead of the game. When you see the second sheet and the third sheet, you'll see how we address those questions. So this sheet assumes steady as we've been going with our uh, historical spending, not capital purchases, not depreciation, not amortization. Okay, this is just from operations. It doesn't have all that accounting magic in it. So once you have what you think is going to happen, first blush, spend a half hour on this, no more, don't complicate it show it to the team, if they support it, then Vic, go to the 90 day plan here. And the top half of this is income statement and the bottom half is cash flow, balance sheet. And cash flow, excuse me. So now you're gonna put detail to this. All right, what was our original plan on product and what do we have to change so that our projection, how does it look against our plan and this does not automate because we want the conversation and the thinking. So the second tab does not link to the first tab. We could do that, but then you're not having the what if and getting your team involved in, well, if we move this here, how could that impact that? Well, we really don't need this much marketing. Um, and so you can look at your revenue, your cost of goods and your expenses and detail. You can add rows and stuff. You can um, put some detail to what your spending is going to be by the month to hit that uh, front page forecast. 
Then down here, Vic is, uh, and I'll stop using your name, I'm sorry. Down here, collections, uh, if you're gonna have cash inflows, cash outflows, um, are you doing principal payments, any other income? And so this is gonna help you after operations from the first tab, if you're gonna have this cash, what portion of it do you have to put where to keep that cash forecast at that six months to still have cash, to still be in the game? If you wanna slow down on your materials or if you have to prepay or if you can change your payables. And so a lot of the, those uh, questions about what to do are in the tips, tricks and hacks uh, booklet, which will give you advice on how to approach some of these things. <clears throat> You're only halfway there. Well, you're about two thirds there. You got the forecast, you've involved your team, you've put some detail to the plan, okay? But none of this matters. You're not gonna get traction, you're not gonna get movement out of this until you build this scoreboard. And just like the operation scoreboards you folks have enjoyed in the past that have helped you get predictable, respectable results in your operations, now it's time to go to the bank. And so whatever, opportunities or concerns you have from your forecast of cash and your detail of cash movement on the 90 day plan, you're gonna put those line items up here. You're gonna have a plan. You're gonna have an owner that's somebody other than the president or the CFO. And we're gonna to get together once a week and understand how everybody on the team thinks they're gonna finish the month so that we all know where we're going. We all know what each other's working on and we know how to help each other because it's easy to stop one person. It's impossible to stop 100 people working on the same thing. If this scoreboard's huge on your wall, and if it, ex you know, if it resides on the wall, what you measure, publish, communicate will improve. So if you go through this exercise and you get this up on the wall, you will survive. Dave, I noticed you have a col column in there for owner. And for some of the people listening who may not be practitioners of the game, can you explain that a little bit? So the owner is not the person with equity. The owner is the person that's responsible for this line item. So um, tax payments, collecting other income, uh, SG&A expenses. So there might be someone, if you have an accounting team of six people, you might have someone named Sally or John that manages your SG&A expenses. And you've decided to take the, that variable expense from 6% down to 4.5%. So John is going to be the owner of this line. Your revised plan to reduce the variable expenses is going to go there in dollars. And every week, John's going to come to the team and forecast or offer his opinion on whether or not he's going to hit this monthly goal. Thank you. And in the beginning, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Rich, I was going to ask you, could you comment a little bit about the debt capacity line, please? Yeah, the, the, the debt capacity is, is a lesson learned that uh, I think all of us learned in 2008, 2009, when we had the last black swan. Um, it certainly, when it came, uh, certainly was something that, uh, that Jack taught us well. And, and really, it comes back to the idea that, you know, cash is your lifeblood and Without it, game's over. The last thing that you have is your ability to access cash. And debt capacity is basically um, the, the cash that is available to you in terms of other sources like a, maybe your line of credit or uh, you know, long-term loans, um, those types of things. So it really comes down to what is um, the, the uh, available cash that you have and that if you hit that debt capacity that basically you're out, out of covenants in a lot of, a lot of cases um, and that it's at that point that you really don't have any other choice but maybe to look at selling part of the business or bringing equity in that sort of thing because you've really hit that limit. So what we've done in the past is really understanding what that is. Now it's not not the fact that maybe you're going to hit it. It's more of what is that end game so that we can start to work backwards in terms of planning our business, right? In terms of understanding at what, what time period up as we move closer to that debt capacity, do we have to make tough decisions? 
Like, for example, do, when, when's the time where we got to, you know, just have everybody look at 10% across the board cuts in terms of your expenses? Or do we have to look at cutting, you know, hours or cutting pay or benefits or any other things that we need to do before we hit that particular debt capacity? Thank you. Um, we've had a lot of questions regarding uh, will this recording be available and it will be available tomorrow. And we're also being asked about sharing the worksheet. And after this uh, webinar is over, we'll be sending out an email with the uh, resources guide, the worksheet and the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, one of our uh, listeners uh, made a comment about, well, if the CEOs or owners are not that comfortable with cash flow, can you guys help define some of the terms like SG&A? And you know what? That is a, that is a, a bad habit of ours because we live in the financials so much. We assume some of these things. Uh, but yes, I think the question is, and that's exactly why we are, you know, our coaches are donating their time to help walk through that. Yeah. But, um, you know, SGNA sales, uh, general and administrative expenses. But right. uh, I don't know, is there anything else on there, uh, Rich, that I might be missing? Darren, I, I guess I would I'd make a couple of comments is that, um, yes, yeah, start with the language first. When we talk about teaching financial, start with your, your language. And there's a lot of different uh, languages out there in terms of not only the accounting language, but also your individual company language that you may use internally to explain some of these uh, line items. The other thing that I would really point out is that, again, this scoreboard is very dynamic. Um, we're providing some examples here, but based on your business, service, manufacturing, um, your own lingo, those line items may be, you know, adjusted. So, um, this is not a fixed scoreboard. This is something that you should modify. I think it's, it's, it's good to work with a coach um, to kind of help modify that. But we're really looking at those line items. We teach it the same way we do income statement is that we're looking at the 80-20 principle. Darren, is, is what are the 20% of the line items that make 80% of the impact and then roll up the other expenses into other categories. We're trying to make this as simple as, as possible. But what we've tried to cover on the, on the cash scoreboard here is really understanding it more of what, what we kind of internally call modified cash flow. It's not traditionally what you would see goes to the bank or things like, as, as Dave said, this is really a cash flow for really managing your day-to-day, -day, week by week cash flow. And it, it's trying to simplify it just like you would manage your cash at home. What cash do you have available right now and what are your inflows and outflows of your cash? And what is, what, what's your expected in, you know, ending balance, right? right? Either that balance could be more cash or that you're, you're going deeper into your, your loan balance. And we need to know that. But what's the most important is all those drivers that are in the middle of it to have line item ownership around that, having individuals that are responsible for making sure that they're finding every opportunity uh, to move that number in the right direction week after week. Thank you.